welcome to the Tennis IQ Podcast. I'm Josh Berger. And I'm Brian Lomax. And on today's episode, we have a guest to talk to, Swapnil Sahai. Swapnil is the co-founder and CEO of Swing Vision, which is a data, and he's a data science lecturer at UC Berkeley. Uh, he's a lifelong tennis player and massive Federer fan. And he's got a triple major from UC Berkeley, a PhD in statistics from Columbia, and he's built patented AI for autonomous driving at Tesla Autopilot. He created Swing Vision, which is an AI tennis app that provides automated scoring, shot tracking, and line calling um, with the mission to democratize the professional tennis experience for players of all levels. Uh, yeah, what I... During this conversation, and um, you know, as I think everyone will will be able to to judge for themselves, but um, there, Swapnil really explains the the, the different uh, applications of Swing Vision, both for individual athletes and also how coaches can get involved in that process with um, goal setting and with performance tracking. And if a player is trying to, you know, let's say work on a certain aspect of their game, you can you know measure how consistent you are over time and, you know, the errors that you're making. So both with individuals, but also with teams. Um, we talked about how a lot of uh, college teams, as well as um, some uh, federations, some national federations are using Swing Vision now. So uh, in this conversation, you'll hear how uh, both at the individual and team level, uh, Swing Vision uh, can, can, can and is being utilized. Um, so enjoy the conversation with Swapnil Sahai. Well, we'd like to welcome today in the Tennis IQ podcast, Swapnil Sahai. Thanks for joining us. Hey, guys. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, uh, you're welcome. And it's, uh, yeah, we're really, really excited to, uh, to speak with you today and to learn more about, you know, you and your background and, and also Swing Vision and how Swing Vision can be, um, you know, beneficial for, for tennis players and its applications um, to the mental side of the game. Um, so I think we'll start, you know, as we often do with, with these interviews with, um, you know, what, what, how did you get started with tennis and what's, you know, what's really your background with the sport? Yes. Yeah, so I've been playing tennis basically, I mean, as long as I can remember, um, I started actually around like seven years old, so not that young, but, uh, it was the first sport basically that I played. My dad grew up playing it. I used to watch it with him all the time. Uh, we, we were like huge Federer fans. We'd watch like all of like the Federer matches and the Federer Nadal rivalry kind of growing up. So that was really fun. And, um, my brother also played as well. So kind of like a tennis family playing all the time and, uh, played from high school, played more kind of casually, I'd say in college and grad school, I kind of went more of the academic route, but it's still been a, been a big part of my life. And then even today I still play uh, UST league tennis in, in NorCal. So still, still an avid player for sure. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. So how did you, you know, when you said you took the academic route, so what, what's your academic background that may have led to, you know, creating, uh, you know, an app like, like swing vision. Yeah. It's funny. Cause if you look back now in retrospect, it's like the path seems like, Oh, I'm so obvious now, but it's funny. Yeah. At the time I was like, I had no idea I was going to go into tennis. You know, I was like, I love the sport, but I didn't think it was going to be my job. Uh, but yeah, I went, uh, studied math and statistics at UC Berkeley for my undergrad. That's where I ended up meeting my co-founder, Richard. He was studying electrical engineering and computer science. So very intense, really smart guy. Um, and then, uh, I was originally actually trying to become a professor. So I went to Columbia to do my PhD in statistics, which is a little bit more kind of theoretical and advanced, just math basically. Um, and I, I was, I was working there. What started to happen was, I started to get interested in um, applications of statistics and artificial intelligence. And so while I was there, I interned at Tesla a couple of times in their autonomous driving team. So I got to basically see the bleeding edge of AI in practice and like how it's actually made, how it's actually like shipped in a product that's used by millions of people. And so as I got more experience around that, I started, the idea started to click that like, maybe I could use something like this for tennis. And, and I always had this problem actually, like since I was a kid, I wanted data on my game. Like I wanted to know, you know, how fast am I serving or how often am I actually, you know, holding serve or, or saving break points and all that kind of stuff. And I had no data, like there's no data if you're an amateur player. And it seemed like the problem was so hard to be able to capture that data. Like the only way to do it is basically Hawkeye, which is like 10 cameras around the court and like a bunch of fancy computers. And it just did not seem accessible to the average player. 
Um, but yeah, as I, as I just got more experience working at Tesla in particular, like that's where I became really familiar with the latest in AI. And there's been so many advancements in the last, I'd say like five to 10 years that has made it possible to finally use just a single camera to be able to do a lot of the stuff that you needed like multiple cameras for many years ago. And I think that's really where the idea for swing regions kind of crystallized. And I was like, Oh, okay. If I, if I can do this with just one camera, then I can just do it with an iPhone. That's all I need. I don't need like a really expensive setup. Um, and I didn't know that it would actually work, but I kind of had like a gut feeling and I was like, I think I can do this just based on my experience. So I was like, let's just try it. No one else is doing it. No one else is attempting this. So I was like, let me just will it into existence and see what happens. And that's basically like why we started Swing Vision. Very cool. And, and that process started at, at UC Berkeley? Um, I would say it started probably more towards when I was in grad school. Um, so when I was at Columbia, that was when I kind of, I actually made the first version of Swing when I was at Columbia. So the very first version was an app for your Apple Watch. And it was like pretty basic. You would just like keep scores by swiping on your watch. And it was, it was pretty novel because like just keeping scores after each point, like I would already get like all these amazing match stats. So I did kind of solve the problem of getting data on my game, but the problem was very manual. Like I have to keep swiping after every point. Not everybody wants to do that, obviously. And so the real solution felt like something automated, but I didn't know exactly how to do that. And then it wasn't until I worked at Tesla that I had the confidence that, okay, we can just automate this whole thing um, using your iPhone camera. And so, yeah, I left, I ended up like finishing my PhD 2017, joined Tesla full-time. And then I left about two years later in 2019. And that's when I started working on Swing Vision. So kind of more recent, actually, when we kind of pivoted to this like video analysis um, product. So how has Swing Vision helped your game, Sunil? <laughs> well, I mean, I, so I film like pretty much every match I play. Um, and usually if there's, if there's like matches where I lost or like certain games, I remember like losing like, certain breakpoints that I, that I should have, you know, converted or whatever, I can go back and see those really quickly. That's like one of the best features. So as soon as you finish playing, we have these amazing filters in the video. And so you can say like, show me all the breakpoints or show me all the points that I lost on like 30 all or 30, 40. And so I can go back and see that. And immediately I can look at my technique. I can see what was wrong. Like maybe my footwork was like really lazy or whatever it was. Right. And it's just like really nice and easy to see that way. And I've, I've also had situations where I remember like I, my serve was just off that day. Like everything else is fine, but my serve was just off. And so then I can go back and with swing vision, you can filter by shots as well. So I can say like, show me every single serve that I missed. And I remember like there was one match where I was just kept dumping serves in the net. It was like so frustrating. I don't know what was happening. And I could go back and like, see really clearly, like with my technique, like what was wrong, like my toss was off, whatever it was. It's just so fast and easy to kind of self-diagnose what's going wrong. Um, and that's been kind of the main way I've been using it to improve. Just like the video is so powerful. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I think Josh, you would agree, especially at a higher level, you may see like a technical breakdown, which is usually a symptom of something, right? Because I bet if we took you out to the practice court, the serve would look fine. Right. Right. And so it, I think in, in from a coaching perspective, it actually opens up a great opportunity to talk about Hey, you know, we see something happening with the serve and that's a frequent complaint I hear from players like, oh, my serve wasn't working today as if like, okay, <laughs> that's great. You know, the, it's over, right? Your serve wasn't working, but it, we can have a conversation now. Okay. What do you think was happening there? Um, you know, in these moments, because we know you know how to hit the serve, but there was something, there was some sort of cognitive interference that was then manifesting into this, this technical issue, right? And I know Josh and I were really interested in, all right, how could we use something like Swing Vision to talk about the mental game? And I think in many ways, you know, when you see these technical breakdowns, the root cause probably isn't technique. I mean, it could be maybe at a certain level, but um, it's very often a, a, a window to a conversation. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think that's what's so cool is like, even just attempting to like self-diagnose, like what happened is like such a great exercise for a player to do. And then of course, if you can do that with a coach, it's better. Cause like, you know, your coach knows like kind of what the right answer is, but you're kind of trying to figure it out yourself. And so I think that's really helpful to kind of get in the habit of doing that. And then what's really nice is eventually you can kind of figure it out, hopefully, you know, on the fly in the match. Cause you're like, Oh, what's going wrong? Like, I know what's going wrong. I know how I fixed this last time. I know I need to adjust whether it's like mental or technique. Right. So yeah, that's really cool. And we hope to facilitate more more conversations like that with between coaches and students as like the platform starts to evolve, um, and it's 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 exciting time for sure. 
That's awesome. No, I, I can definitely see how, um, you know, being able to watch back and watch the video and get the, the statistics afterwards would leave, lead to a greater level of awareness, greater level of awareness and understanding of one's own game. Um, I mean, I've, I've noticed through my coaching, you know, on court where it's, you can tell somebody something, but when they can actually see it themselves or when they can actually experience it themselves, there's often that, that breakthrough, that, that light bulb goes off more. Um, what have you, I guess, in terms of where, where the app is now, or maybe, um, you know, towards the future as well, what do you see as some of the, um, the main benefits and applications for both individual, uh, tennis players, as well as teams? Yeah. I mean, with individual tennis players, it's similar to what I mentioned. So, you know, review, I'd say of, of like how you've been playing certain points, even how you've been constructing certain points, honestly, like just looking at the strategy you're implementing. Um, it's, it's really helpful to be able to see that. And we're, we're spending even more time on that this quarter. We're going to release something really amazing, which um, will show you what patterns of play in a match led to higher chances of success winning the point and which patterns of play led to like low chances of success. That's important too, to know, you know like I shouldn't be hitting that way, or maybe I need to just work on that. I wasn't executing that pattern. So that's going to be, I think, really, really fascinating and really helpful to just really quickly digest like how I should be playing a particular opponent. Um, and then like for an amateur player, it's been interesting because they have the benefit of creating highlights. Like we're able to find all the best moments of the match. And that's just really fun to be able to go see like those amazing points that you had. Maybe you guys just broke down like laughing after the point or, you know, there's just always these amazing memories that are created on the court. And Swing Vision's actually done a really great job of like capturing that and allowing you to relive it and like share it again and again. So that was very unexpected. We didn't develop the app with that in mind, but it's turned out to be a very popular, you know, use case. And then on the team side, what we've been seeing, you know, we have dozens of, Division one, division two teams now paying for and using the product. And a big benefit for them is just the real time turnaround. So traditionally, if they wanted to get stats about their game, they had to film it, go like upload it to another service. Somebody is going to sit there and like tag it manually. Maybe someone's going to run some algorithms, but still it's like, there's a lot of turnaround time. You have to wait like several hours or maybe even like a day or two to get any sort of data back. But with Swing Vision, what's amazing is it does it all in real time on your device. Uh, even if you don't have internet connection, we just use the power of your device to process the video. And so as soon as you're done filming right away, you have like all those highlights, you have all the stats. And that's what we found has been the biggest benefit is just like saving time for, for the teams. And so they can immediately, immediately get their data. They can just look at it on an iPad right now, you know, next to their students right after the match and everybody can see it and, and get, you know, the point right away. So it's like so, so fast and easy. And then we also upload the video to the cloud and then any player on the team can access it on their personal device at any time. So like later that night, you know, you're, you're at home at the hotel, you're on the road or whatever it is, like you can immediately check your stats, see what, see what happened ahead of your next match. So it's just really convenient um, and accessible, I would say, you know, for the teams. That's That's been the big thing that we've been seeing there. Um, and then the biggest request we're getting now is live streaming. <laughs> so, you know, people always want more, but that's kind of the next thing is, you know, okay, this, all this analysis and video analysis is great, but like, can we also stream it? Can we share this with people live, not just after the fact? So that's going to be a big push for us this year is to bring that to teams initially, but then actually we want to bring it to individuals as well, because we believe that someday, you know, every league match should be streamed as well, or every junior match should be streamed. So we want to just bring that to everyone. Um, and so, yeah, it's been, it's been great working, especially with the college teams because they kind of, they're like five steps ahead almost, I feel like. And um, a lot of things they want, I think that everybody wants, but they have a good handle of like what people actually care about. Um, so it's been it's been awesome working with them on that. One of the teams that I work with is is a Swing Vision client, and um, you know you mentioned earlier, you know how can we use it to facilitate coach player conversations? And one of the things that they're doing that I think is very cool is because everything's uploaded to the cloud, the players have to go back and watch on their own and come up with certain things. So they'll be given an assignment of be looking for this or that. And you know, Josh, you brought up the idea of building awareness, and that's that's one of these things that they're that they're doing is using you know these these stats and these recordings as a way of helping them build more awareness about their own games, their own patterns. Um, you know, do I win more points if it's longer? You know, more than five shots, things like that. You know, and so it's been a really great tool for for that team and 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 the learning piece. I love the highlight piece. You know, I, I do some visualization exercises with them. And one of the daily things that we do 
is have them visualize a personal highlight film, you know, in their mind, right? Now, but we now that you've given them this, right, they can maybe ha- extract a few and then really burn that into their into their own mind so that they're yeah. seeing their their best tennis more often. They're feeling yeah. that they're creating, you know, helping to, to recreate the emotions and the mental state that went mm-hmm. into some of those highlights so that we can replicate it. So I think that that's a, it's cool that maybe it was an unplanned feature, but, but showed <laughs> up. Yeah. And like, as you said, the, so many people are using it in all these different ways, right? Like some people are using it just to like share a highlight reel on Instagram or TikTok or whatever, but then some people are using it for, you know, like recruiting purposes or scouting purposes. Some people are using it to just analyze our game, remember what, what went well, just have a positive memory from that match. Like this, it's such a, it's really cool to see like all the creative ways. I think people have been adopting the technology um, and sort of like guiding us and like, okay, this is what we want. This is what we want to add. And I think the coaching thing that you mentioned is actually really cool because the concept of like giving you homework and like, you know, diagnosing yourself, go look at your match, like figure out what went wrong. Like, I feel like that's another situation where I feel like the college coaches are like so ahead of the curve. Cause I feel like every private coach should be doing this too. Like if I'm a private coach, I can work with my student and like, even though I'm not with them on their matches, if they're going around the country or whatever, playing matches, right? Like I can just assign them homework. Like, okay, you played a match today. Like take a look at it. Give me a summary of what you think happened. What'd you do? Well, I can look at it too from the comfort of my home and like give you my perspective as well. And you can kind of compare notes. And it just, I feel like there's so much potential there to bring this to even more coaches besides just college tennis, but they're obviously kind of at the frontier and you're kind of seeing that. So that's cool. Uh, no, I, I, I really like that. And especially, you know, in terms of that application with coaches, um, as it relates to goal setting, um, which is a topic that we talk a lot about on this show um, and how, you know, let, let's say a player is trying to work on, a, you know, adding, um, you know, power and accuracy to their serve, trying to develop a new, you know, a new serve or um, further, you know, one of their shots. Um, in, in terms of their accuracy, in terms of maybe their spin, um, how can swing vision fit into that in terms of the the player and the coach and the, and the goal setting process? Yeah, so you can, so, you know, we, we specialize in like shot tracking. That's kind of our, our bread and butter. And the three main metrics that we focus on for any type of shot, whether it's like your serve or your return or forehand or backhand is like the speed, as you mentioned, the pace, um, the consistency. So like how often is it going in and then also the placement and specifically right now we focus on depth. So that's probably more relevant for like ground strokes and things like that. But, um, you know, you can kind of look at those three metrics on any stroke and look at that over time in the app. Um, and then you can even set weekly goals too. So it's pretty cool. So you could say like, I'm trying to get, you know, this many reps in, or like, I'm trying to hit at least this fast, this many times. Like I want to hit at least a hundred serves this week that are faster than whatever it is. Right. So you can set goals like that. And then you can actually like track your progress on that week over week and make sure you're hitting those goals. Um, and we're going to be spending a lot of time this quarter, like just making that experience even better. And eventually you want to make it so like your coach could assign you goals for you, um, you know, and like kind of almost like what we've been discussing, like homework. Right. So it's like coach can actually say like, all right, next week, this, this is your goal. Like try to do like these three things. And like, we'll, we'll actually measure it with the app and like actually make sure you're holding yourself accountable and like hitting those goals. And then that should hopefully, you know, translate to better outcomes on the, on the match court too. I think, yeah, so the, in a way, the app has uh, a lot of facility in a training block for a player. Like, so we take, like, you know, a higher level player or anybody, really, because, um, you know, there might be certain periods where you're doing more training than competition. And then there's obviously a, a competition phase to that. So I think it's really cool that the way that that fits in. Um, so I see a lot of great applications there in terms of how, you know, you're setting goals and, your goals may change depending on what kind of block that you're in, right? Yeah, maybe you're working on your serve and accuracy and power. All right, but now we're shifting to more of a competition phase and we're going to be looking at at some other things. Um, so if we bring this back just a little bit more to the mental side of things, um, maybe this is a, an enhancement. Looking at what players do between points, Um you know, what was sort of maybe the average break between points for a player? Because, mm. you know, we talk about, um, you know, one of the classic videos about a between point routine is something called the 16 second cure, you know, where you just kind of your sweet spot is in that 15, 16 second time mm. between points and you're trying to do certain 
activities there. Um, Josh and I both know from watching a lot of tennis, a lot of players in that five to seven second range, <laughs> you know, and it would be really interesting to kind of see some of that um, from a mental coach's perspective, mm-hmm. right? How are we doing with managing the pace of the match or are we going too fast yeah. or maybe are we winning more points when we have a certain cadence versus mm. something else that between points, me. right? Have we, or are we, yeah. we're playing so fast that we're making more errors in that, that type of thing. So mm. maybe your wheels are turning here a little bit, which, cause I think <laughs> it would be great for us to kind of tie some of that together yeah, yeah, yeah. to see how people focus better, worse, or whatever, based yeah. on something that's going on between points. That's so cool. I mean, yeah, we're, we're tracking so much of that data, you know, how much time you're spending between points. And that that right there would be so cool to see, like, um, the correlation between the time between points and, like, chance of winning the point. I know one thing I've been doing lately is um, I have – so I wear my Apple Watch when I play, and I can see my heart rate live. And so if I had, like, a really long point, I'll actually take a look at my heart rate and, like, make sure it goes down to, like, a certain number before I start the next point just to make sure like I'm feeling confident about my fitness and I'm not like you know, doing too much. And I feel like it's helped me so much. Like I can't, I haven't really been able to quantify like how much more I've been winning, but I definitely feel like I've been playing a lot better. I've been lasting longer. And I just feel like little things like that, like looking at your heart rate, your heart rate recovery, how much time are you spending between points? Like all that from mental side, phys- physical side, it's all very important um, to just kind of give yourself like a little bit of reset. And then, as you said, you don't want to like spend too much time similarly with the heart rate too like you don't want to get too low right so it's it's kind of funny um but it's so cool because like yeah we're tracking all this data so i think like we'll definitely do a lot of these things and thank you for the suggestion we'll definitely look into that and send send more our way we'll we'll certainly try to add more that we can do to help you analyze kind of the mental side of things yeah and the heart rate piece would be a great addition to that because as you said you know getting it lower is better not only physically but you think better when your heart rate is lower, right? You don't want to be in a more anxious fight or flight yeah, situation, exactly. you know, where you're just reacting and you're not able to respond to what's going on. Yeah, I, I would really love to see like what my heart rate is on like break points and like how that compares <laughs> to, to normal points. It'd be interesting to see because maybe I'm just being, you know, more impulsive in my decision making. Could be, yeah. I think that'd be really valuable info for everybody. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, I, I absolutely. I think. It, it, it sounds like there's a, a lot of um, potential applications for the future in terms of, you know, being able to utilize the the Apple Watch and, um, and, and just thinking about, you know, how to best utilize all that data um, in terms of de- development. Um, now, I know that, um, you know, Andy Roddick, as well as um, James Blake have both um, gotten involved and have had a role. Um, I, I was curious, you know, what, what that role has looked like and, and what their you know experience at the at the highest levels of the game, how that has contributed to the development of swing vision. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, it's they've been involved on various facets. I think earlier on they were more involved with some of the product, like you know what metrics we should potentially uh, prioritize or how we should display things in the app. Like, what's a use? What are useful metrics to track? What are like less important to track? These were some really early discussions we had when we were deciding kind of which route to go. Um, you know, for example, like we, we've been focusing a lot on, on tracking the ball trajectory and like doing things with like where the ball is landing. Um, you know, we could have gone another route, which is like focus on like swing analysis and like biomechanics, which is also obviously very important, but, you know, we kind of like mapped out things with them and, and went through like, what are the possible applications of this? And the looking at the ball trajectory seemed like the better route to go because it would eventually solve the line calling problem and all that stuff. So, they were helpful in the early guidance there. And then more recently, it's been more on the on like sort of marketing and sales. So just thinking about how should we approach professional players? We actually have some professional players starting to use the app now. I can't mention the names yet, but it's really exciting, like some really, really top players. So it's been really helpful to talk with them about that discussion to get inside the head of a pro. Like, how do they think? What do they care about? How should we approach them? Because it's very different than talking to like a college, obviously. Um, so, that, so that's been great more recently. And then they also helped a lot with just introductions to people. So um, Andy what was the one who introduced me to Craig Tiley over at Tennis Australia. And then now we have a really deep partnership with them. They just let, let our most recent investment round, actually. So um, we're, we're like super close to Tennis Australia now. And that was kind of all started with, with Andy's intro. So, um, so yeah, I mean, they've been excellent kind of all around, you know, uh, sharing their, their advice and kind of expertise wherever, wherever it applies, I would say. 
uh, and then um, been very helpful on Twitter too, and actively uh, tweeting about us and promoting us. So that's that's always helpful too, and uh, gets a little bump every time they say something. So <laughs> that's been fun. But yeah, I like the direction that you've gone in with with more trajectory as opposed to the biomechanics. It seems like the biomechanic space with apps is there's there are a lot of players in there. Um, yeah. But this is really valuable stuff that others are not really doing uh, probably as well as as, as, as you are. Um, yeah. And so I think that that's, that's been a, a great choice. You mentioned the problem of line calling. You just sort of brought that up, right? Um, and there are unethical practices at all levels of the game, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, yeah, and we talk a lot about it in, in uh, college tennis. We talk a lot about it even in adult league tennis that there can be controversies or poor behavior. Um, where are you with that in terms of you know, solving that world problem yeah. of, of calling lines? Yeah, I mean, that's been like the singular focus of the team like the first half of this year. So we've been really just hammering in on line calling, getting as good as we can. So the way it works today is it's more of a line challenge feature. Um, and so the way it's, you can think of it like it's how Hawkeye used to be before last year. So, you know, now we have a Hawkeye live and like, it's basically just replaced the linesman. But before that, for the last like decade or even longer, right, we had the challenge system. So it's like, oh, challenge. And then Hawkeye shows you the replay. So that's what you have in Swing Vision today already. So if I set up my phone behind me and record the match, I can just go on my Apple Watch and like challenge any call. And then it'll show me a slow motion replay and it'll give me a decision as well. So Swing Vision actually gives the decision. Um, and it's pretty cool because for really close calls that are within like a few centimeters of the line, we're actually more accurate than the players now. And so this has happened like dozens of times now where my opponent and I have no idea whether the ball is in or out. And then we challenge it and it's like really clear from Swing Vision and the, the result is also correct from the AI. So that's been really cool to see. So we basically surpassed human accuracy um, on close calls. The main reason we haven't released the Hawkeye live sort of experience is because it does get some of the easy calls wrong. So we need to kind of be, you know, hundred percent on the easy calls before you do that. You don't want to be making mistakes and annoying people. So we're almost there though. We just, it's just like edge cases that we're trying to solve now, like, you know, some certain scenarios where the AI struggles a little bit, but it's been just improving very rapidly. And we're hoping sometime this year, we'll get to a point where you can just set the phone and it'll just call it call it out for you. You don't even have to challenge. Um, and I think that's the best experience because then you have less ambiguity. There's no like looking at the video and like potential misinterpretation of the video and all that. It's just like, we're just going to trust the system and like, it's just going to do its thing. Um, and I think that's going to have a massive impact, as you said, you know, on league tennis, on college tennis, obviously there's lots of issues. And then even junior tennis, like I think a lot of people drop out of the sport because they have to worry about line calling in the first place, or they have arguments about it, or the parents get like really intense about it or whatever. Right. So it's kind of the only sport at that level when you're a kid where you have to worry about these things. Like no other sport does this in basketball, football, like you have refs, you have other things, other people there doing the things for you in terms of scoring and, and officiating and tennis is the only one where we have to do it. So I really hope swing is going to really improve the, the junior tennis experience and just keep more people in the sport because I think people really love our sport. It's just like, there's some elements that are, you know, not the best, but I think we can improve that with, with this kind of an automated line calling solution. For sure. Cause I mean, at the junior tennis level, there just aren't enough officials to cover all of these courts. Right. Yeah. Um, it's so hard. And even to a certain extent with, with college, it'd be great to, even if you just had the challenge system uh, at a certain level. <laughs> yeah. Cause I, I see on your right. website, you partnering with the ITA, as well, is this part of that, or how how are you partnering with the ITA? Yeah, it's a it's it's part of that. I mean, with with the ITA, the partnership there was more to do a deal where the colleges could get a special rate on the Swing Vision Teams plan. Um, so you know, we have a lot of people who use the Teams plan, we have like academies. We have federations actually who pay for like our Teams package. Um, and so with the ITA, the idea was like, let's give colleges like this, you know, early access is discounted access, but we are having this deeper conversation with the ITA about line calling, about live streaming, all that kind of together. Um, it's it's going to take a while to get there, honestly. Um, I think that there's, you know, several kind of layers of approval there in the chain, as it should be, because this is a very sensitive topic, but um, but we are we are working with with them on it. Um, we've been talking with like the CEO, you know, Tim Russell, and and they're all really excited about the possibilities. But we just kind of have to take our time with it and kind of go through the process. 
but um, yeah, we're, we're pushing full steam ahead on that. And, and I hope it's going to you know get there sooner rather than later. And I think it's going to make college tennis, you know, so much better for everyone, the fans, the players, everybody. So um, yeah, it'll be exciting when it, when it happens. Definitely. Good. Um, well, one question that I have is, um, can you just tell us a little more about sort of the logistics? Um, I mean, is it, I understand, you know, there's the option to, to mount, to mount your phone to, let's say a fence or to use a tripod. Um, but can you just talk a little bit more about the logistics in terms of, you know, in terms of where to set it up and in terms of, you know, based on where you set it up, it being able to, um, see every part of the court, um, and you know, what that might look like now. And, and also going forward, I mean, I think tying into this, I know, I think recently, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I think there was recently a phone where the front facing and back facing, I think it's a Samsung front facing and back facing camera are, you can, you can, uh, record both whether for a photo or video at the same time. Um, so I don't know if that could potentially be an application where, you know, the phone is sort of in the middle of the court where I know currently it's, you know, based more in, in the corner, you know, the, in the back corner behind the, the baseline, but, um, just curious in terms of like logistically what that looks like. And then again, what that could also look like going forward. Yeah, that's interesting. So, um, the way, the way it works right now is, you put your iPhone or iPad behind the baseline. So you have the very like similar angle to what you see on broadcast TV, the classical, like behind the baseline angle. So it's just pretty much right in the middle. Um, you can mount it on a tripod. A lot of people do that. So we recommend at least five feet off the ground. We also sell a mount now directly in the app that lets you stick it on top of the fence. So it's like a pole that collapses into your tennis bag. You can like extend it in like a couple of seconds and just hook it on. It's actually the fastest way to mount your phone. Um, and it gives you the best angle because it's like nice and high on top of the fence. It gives you the best accuracy um, because with a tripod, sometimes the person on the near side is kind of in front of the camera. So you, know, you can have some accuracy issues there. So for a kind of optimal footage and accuracy, we say to do it on top of the fence. Um, and then we are able to track the ball on both sides of the net, surprisingly. Um, you know, the, the latest smartphones have really good cameras, so we can see the other side of the court really clearly. And right now we record at 1080p, but, you know, eventually we'll record at 4k and then you'll have really good clarity on the other side of the court. So we're really excited for that in the future. Um, yeah, the, the, the kind of dual camera simultaneous camera thing is pretty interesting. Um, the, the iPhone supported that as well. So you could use kind of like the selfie camera and the rear camera at the same time, but yeah, then you'd have to place it near the net post. And so, you know, that's something we kind of explored a lot initially. We were even thinking like in early days, like we should have maybe an, an iPhone, like on each side of the net, like facing each, each half, kind of like, a, like an umpire, but we looked at the footage and like, it just didn't seem that nice to like see tennis from that angle. Like we just felt like people are used to seeing it kind of from the baseline. And that's kind of what people had the habit of. And we wanted to replicate that sort of experience. So that's kind of the route we went, but we do plan to have support for multiple cameras. So you could put, you could put an iPhone behind each baseline, which would have a couple of benefits. One is that we could combine the video and so you could watch it from either side if you wanted to. So let's say you're just trying to focus on the technique of a particular player, you can kind of follow them as they change sides. You always have that nice angle where you're close to them and you can see their form really clearly. And then also increase the accuracy because just when you have more cameras, you get more accuracy for line calling and things like that. So, I mean, we, we do believe we're going to be able to solve the problem in terms of surpassing human accuracy with a single camera, but um, you know, having, having two just, just makes it even better. So why not? Um, and I think that's going to just improve like the playback experience the viewing experience and, and all of that i think this is covered on your website but more again uh, on the technical logistical side you know some people may not have ipads iphones they may have android they may have gopros they may their facility may even be play site enabled you know how, how do you work with uh you know clients who are using those types of uh products yeah. So um, typically what happens is people are using GoPros or Android, then what they can do is they can still record with those devices actually. And then they just need a way to transfer the video into um, like a Mac or, or an iPad or something like that. So a lot of times I'll just buy like a, like an entry level iPad or something like that, or you, even the lowest level iPhone, actually the SE is like now about $200. So a lot of times people will just buy that and they'll either record with that or just like import footage from their GoPro into that and then process it there. So yeah, we're exclusive on iOS right now. Um, that's mainly been because of the hardware requirements that we need. These algorithms are, are pretty you know, intense as you could imagine. Um, and, and Apple's AI hardware is actually like super advanced. So they've, they've been able to support what we need in terms of just like power consumption and efficiency. 
but we are seeing the latest uh, Android devices are also at that same capability. So like the Pixel 6 that came out last year, the Samsung S22 that just came out, those two are excellent devices as well. So we're hoping those will be the first Android devices to get Swing Vision. Um, and so, you know, we're aiming to get some version of Swing Vision by the end of this year, worst case, like early next year. Um, and so we're not too far off from Android. Um, but until then, if you really, really want it really soon, uh, you can always you can always just get like a low cost iPhone for a couple hundred bucks. Or if you have a Mac, that's an option too. Um. Awesome. No, I, I think, you know, I, I just based on, you know, what I've heard and I, I, I will say I haven't actually used it myself with my own game, but I, I definitely, you know, plan to plan to try it in the future, but just, you know, through what I've heard as well as this conversation, I, I've, you know, can imagine all, all sorts of different applications from the recreational player, whether they're, um, you know, adult or junior to, you know, the, the league player that plays on a team. Um, you can also imagine a, a team, you know, a USTA team, like an adult team, for instance, using, you know, using swing vision, being able to maybe even make um, lineup decisions at times based on based on some of the data, um, or you know, I, I know as a coach, um, you know, when I was working on court with players, you know, one of the big one of the toughest things was making lineup decisions and being able to clearly see that a player is moving in the right direction and is making progress towards some of their goals. Um, can you know can can certainly swing that swing that decision one way or the other if you can you know clearly see the data in terms of the goal setting in terms of the progress I, I can certainly see a lot of applications there um, so I guess I guess um, you know it'd be helpful and Brian I'm sure you have some other questions too but I guess it would be helpful like in to you know certainly player certainly our listeners can can go to the website and learn more about swing vision um but could you tell us a little bit more just about um you know if somebody's interested you know what some of the subscription plans some of the you know some of that side of things in terms of okay I, i'm interested in swing vision and then what comes next yeah so uh basically you can actually download the app completely for free and then you can create a free account just go ahead and set up everything and then you can do your first recording as well so we actually let you record up to two hours a month for free and that gives you access to all the video analysis i was talking about all the shot data and if you want to record more than that that's where you use our subscription so we have this pro subscription and it's um, 150 dollars a year so that translates to roughly about 12 dollars a month and so that'll give you access to 30 hours of recording a month lifetime cloud storage as well. So like you can record for like 30 years with Swing Vision if you want, and like all your videos will be there and you can go access them anytime. So it's a really amazing deal. And then we also get access to um, additional features like the line calling stuff that we've been talking about. So that's exclusive to Pro. And then later this month, we're releasing an auto scoring feature too. So it lets you score the match for you automatically. So you never have to keep score with your watch anymore. It's all just automatic. Um, and that's all going to be kind of exclusive to the pro tier as well. Um, and yeah, it's, it's pretty simple, but those are kind of the main kind of plans that we have in terms of how you can use the app. Well, those are cool, cool features. And it's, you know, relatively easy to get started. And, uh, as we're talking, I'm thinking about like more, more things, you know, and I don't know if, if you've had any requests from your college coaches about, um, creating like opponent scouting reports based on these matches. Um, because a lot of the players you play against in college, you know, they may be a freshman. You're going to see them for the next few years. Of course, their games will change, but, you know, certain patterns at that level are fairly mature. You know, that seems like uh, something that could be interesting because when I think of the mental game, ups with nail, I, I think of what can we be doing to reduce uncertainty? Um, uncertainty about why things are breaking down uncertainty about perhaps why I'm I'm struggling or losing you know and I think there are a lot of features here um, that can really help reduce that because you know with uncertainty comes a little bit more anxiety and nerves about what's happening and um, yeah I just see a lot of good features here that can help just with the mental side of the game to help a player feel a little bit more secure that they are they're understanding what's happening with their game yeah, definitely. I mean, there's so much possibilities, like you said, and I think we're we've we've done a good job of kind of collecting the right data. Now we have to just figure out how to present it in the right way, the most efficient way, and the way that's going to be the most helpful. You know, as you guys have been saying. 
Um, so yeah, I hope I hope we'll be able to do all those things, you know, eventually. And there'll be there'll be lots of new stuff that we're adding this year and going into next year. So con we're constantly developing. I think we ship ship updates faster than anyone. We have, we have like something new like every couple of weeks. So we're we're always adding new things. Um, so yeah, just keep the suggestions coming. I would say, <laughs> right? We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> well, happy happy to do that. As we, as I'm sure Josh has maybe some thoughts as well. You know, given that we've both been on court coaches at college level and other levels, um, and and also obviously working as sports like professionals. Yeah, and and as as an on court coach, and this could be you know the, the college coach. This could be you mentioned federations. This could be at the Davis Cup level at the Billie Jean King cup level, um, you know, ATP cup as well. Um, I, I've seen in the past and correct. And, you know, I, I, I don't know. Um, I think it was the ATP cup where there's, um, you know, sort of that the live statistics and live, um, data that the coaches have access to, and they'll, they'll, you know, talk to a player if, if the player is in the right mindset to, to hear it during that minute and a half changeover break, um, you know, using, using a, an iPad and going over some of that data, maybe it's, you know, for serve percentage or whatever, whatever data they're looking at. Um, is that something that's, you know, available yet for a college coach to be able to use in the moment during a match um, or, you know, the, the coach from, let's say a federation? Yeah. So we haven't built that out yet. Um, the, you know, but the nice thing is we are tracking everything in real time. So we could make that if we, if the demand is there for it, we haven't had a request for it yet. Um, I think maybe it might still be kind of like a gray area in terms of the rules potentially. Yeah. I mean, you would think that it should be allowed because even in the pro matches, aside from ATP cup, like in the big screens, you know, in the, in the stadium, like they are showing like all the stats live, like at the change of ends and at the end of each set. So like, it seems like it should be reasonable to allow access to data as long as both players have access it doesn't seem like anybody's really getting an advantage there so i think that it's still kind of a gray area in college tennis but i hope that we can move to a direction where there's just more transparency for everybody everybody should have access to real-time data you know at that point it's not it's just it's, i think it's going to make it strictly better for everyone um the, the level of play should increase right if, if both players are kind of adapting their game in real time it should just make the match more competitive if anything so i think um that's going to be an exciting future but um, yeah, we don't have that in the app yet, but it's uh, it's certainly we hope, something we hope to do. And, you know, we want to bring it to, to all, to all of tennis, you know, league tennis, junior tennis, everyone should have access to data. That's what we believe. Yeah, so this is a bit about how you can actually use Swing Vision. So you, this is the amount that we recommend. It's this pole that extends really quick to set up. You just attach your phone on it and then stick it on top of the fence behind you. So you're gonna have that same kind of broadcast angle. If you have an Apple Watch, it's really easy because you can check the camera, make sure it looks okay, and then start the recording. And then as you play, what's actually gonna happen is it's going to track all of your data in real time. So as you can see in the top right, it's measuring where is the ball landing, what's the speed of the shots, what's the type of the shots, and it's able to just do all this in real time as you're playing, um, which is pretty incredible. I think that's, I think, yeah, really cool. And I've been seeing it, you know, quite a bit on, on social media as well. And I, I'm sure, I'm sure there are listeners, you know, in our, in our audience who are, who are currently using it. And if so, you know, yeah. we'd love to lo love, love to hear from everybody in terms of, you know, how, how are you using it? I'm sure there are cases that, you know, we didn't even think of, and, you know, maybe uh swoop nil, I'm sure you've heard of a lot of different, um, applications and, and uses for for the technology um but no we'd, we'd love to hear about how you know how this is best being used in terms of your development in terms of aiding your mental game and in terms of aiding your performance as a whole yeah for sure and then just to show a couple more things here it's pretty cool so um let's say you hit a shot and then your opponent calls it out you can just go to your watch and challenge right away. So it's a little challenge button. And then in this case, you can check the serve and it says that the serve was actually in. And so you can immediately check that. <laughs> that um, is really cool. <laughs> yeah, and then the last thing I'll just show you is the video playback. So this is like one of the most powerful things in the app. So we have this little filter button in the bottom left while you're playing back your match. And you can add all kinds of amazing filters. So in this case, you could say like, show me the break points that I won with a forehand winner on my opponent's serve. So this isn't really for technique purposes, this is probably more just to show off to my opponent and make a highlight reel. Um, but I can now make a nice little highlight reel of like the points that I won with a forehand winner. So it's kind of fun. 
Um, so that's like a cool little, you know, you can share my best points. And then in terms of like more strategic analysis or technique analysis, we have our shot by shot mode. And so you could look at very specific shots hit by a player. You can filter by a particular stroke type if you want. Um, you can even filter by the direction of the shot as well. Um, and then go into more detail. So like not just forehands, but return forehands in particular. And then whether it was in or out. And then with that, I'll create a highlight of just those shots. So these are going to be like my cross court return forehands that went in. And so I can just see kind of what I was doing on those shots. And so it's like really nice and easy to review your form. And so those are just kind of some of the things you can do with Swing Vision. Um, but it's, uh, as you can see, it's, it's doing a lot of things both in real time, but also kind of after the match as well to, to review what happened on the court. Absolutely. Looks, I mean, tremendously powerful and a, a lot of different uses. I mean, that was just two minutes, but we probably could have dove into a couple of other of those category things. For sure. Um, you know, especially since, you know, you mentioned you're tracking the trajectory of the ball, which I also find very interesting, you know, how much clearance are we getting over the net? You know, how many revolutions per minute are we generating on that ball? Uh, depends on the player, of course, right? So there might be other statistics or, you know, uh, yeah, statistics that uh, would be interesting based on your game style. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we are tracking the height over the net. It's not something we actually show in the app yet. We still have been trying to figure out the best way to visualize and without kind of you know, overwhelming the user. But it is something we hope, we hope to do eventually. And then, yeah, RPM is a tricky one. but I hope we'll be able to do that eventually too. Um, usually you need really high speed cameras to do it accurately, but um, I think I think if someone can figure out a way to do it with a single camera, it's gonna be us. So we'll we'll get it, we'll get it there. <laughs> Excellent. Josh, anything else? Um I know I know you you um you mentioned the um you know the the, the phone mount and I know there's you know a, a new bundle and also um I don't know if there's any sort of um, you know, code you wanted to mention or anything like that, but I figured, you know, that, that would be great for, you know, any of our listeners who are, who are really interested. Yeah, for sure. So, um, the fence mount that I mentioned, usually it's a, it's about a hundred dollars. And then our subscription I mentioned is $150, but we have a bundle where you can get both together for $160. So you're basically saving like hundred dollars includes free shipping domestically in the U S as well. Um, so yeah, you can get that bundle, that discount, um, using the code that we're going to provide you guys. So you can share that in your kind of description for the podcast, but it's going to be basically swing.tennis backslash C like coupon and then backslash tennis IQ. So pretty simple. Um, and we'll have that link for your listeners in the description as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's awesome. great. That sounds great. Yeah. I mean, that was a great conversation, Swipnil. Um, and it's really fun to learn about how this space is evolving in tennis and can be so helpful to players and coaches develop their game. So th thanks so much for coming on. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you both uh, for having me. It's really interesting talking with both of you, especially with your unique perspective on the mental side of things. I haven't had a lot of conversations around that. So I hope to learn more about that space and, you know, hopefully contribute to that as well with swing vision eventually. Well, that was a great conversation. Um, I, I would say one of the biggest things that stood out to me was the uh, the application of swing vision um, with the goal setting process. How um, you know a player can really see their metrics and and get the data um, for how they're doing, and how the coach can also be involved in that process. Um, I think one of the frustrating aspects, both as a player and a coach, is that lack of um, measurable data. Um, especially in, in real time. And I think Swing Vision really does provide that. Um, when we talk about the goal setting process, um, we know that, um, you know, is specifically with SMART goals, um, me measurable is one of the, the key components there. And being able to measure your progress and measure how, you know, how close you're getting to your goals with data in real time is, is really a game changer. So that, that was one of my biggest takeaways. Yeah, and I, I think that's right, Josh. I mean, um, whether you're a sports psych coach or, or tennis coach, working with a player, having this data is, is, is fantastic because now you can even be more specific about some of the goals that you're trying to achieve and you have a better way of measuring that. Um, because I think one of the challenges of, uh, for every tennis player with respect to the mental game is uh, levels of uncertainty. And I think in using an app like Swing Vision can possibly help with that, not only on the goal setting piece, but perhaps even 
uh, st with strategy and tactics. What's really effective? What what isn't effective? You know, I think you can get a deeper understanding of what's really happening in a match, and that in itself could lead to you know more levels of certainty, which could help perhaps relax the player, um, bring more confidence to what they do, um, etc. Um, Swapnil was also really kind enough to give us, uh, you know, and the listeners of this podcast, a discount link, which we will put in the, the show notes. But you can get $100 off the Swing Vision Pro subscription bundle. Uh, that includes a phone mount that can be, you know, uh, mounted on the back of a fence or a curtain um, so that you can, you know, start using the app. And, you know, having the mount is going to help uh, certainly um, – kind of like optimal shot tracking, you know, in terms of accuracy and trajectory and, and those sorts of things. So um, really generous offer and and encourage everybody who is a, a player, a coach, college or high school coach to take advantage of that, of that offer. Um, but I thought it was really a great conversation, you know, and I think uh, we were both trying to give Swapnil some ideas maybe, you know, about how to expand this into, you know, um, more into the psychological and mental aspect of the game. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll see um, some updates to the product and, and we can talk to Swapnil again in, in the future. So we want to, you know, again, extend our thanks to Swapnil Sahai for appearing on the Tennis IQ podcast. And also uh, thank you for listening to today's episode. Again, please check out the show notes for the, um, this, the uh, discount link. Uh, if you have any feedback or questions for Josh and me, uh, please email us at tennisiqpodcast at gmail.com. You can also use the Twitter hashtag tennisiq. Additionally, please subscribe to the show on your podcast platform of choice, including YouTube, so you can be notified of new episodes. And you can check out our Instagram page. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you soon in our next episode.